Hey everyone, welcome to this episode of History with Sai. I'm actually really excited to kick off a series on the history of India. The goal of this informal series is to help those of you who are unfamiliar with Indian history and civilization to get a better understanding of what it's all about. So, let's begin. While prehistoric cultures have existed in India for at least half a million years, for our purpose here, we'll only go back five to 6,000 years. This would put us somewhere between the years 4,000 to 3,000 BCE. It was around this time that most people in the northwestern part of the subcontinent had given up their hunter-gatherer lifestyle for a more settled existence. They subsisted on grain that they harvested and animals such as sheep, goats, and of course cattle that they domesticated. Some of them also hunted deer. All this was aided by the production of various technologies and tools, for example, potteries and jars for storing food and basic plows and hoes for producing it. Eventually, metal tools, specifically those made of copper, gradually became more widespread. Some areas were even more advanced and adopted the use of tools made of bronze. Again, it's important to note that the Indian subcontinent is vast, so these stages of development came to various areas at different times. It's in such an environment that Harappan civilization came to be. Harappan civilization was the first urban one that we know about in South Asia. Similar to those of Mesopotamia and Egypt, Harappan civilization also developed along the banks of great rivers, in this case, the Indus River. In fact, initially, historians had called it the Indus Valley Civilization. However, over time, as more of such settlements were discovered quite some distance from the Indus River Valley, the term Harappan was adopted. The name comes from Harappa, the first archaeological site of this culture ever to have been discovered. Harappan sites actually have a lot of similarities. For example, there was a similar style of black and red pottery, they used the same type of bricks, tools, artistic styles and patterns, fashioned similar terracotta objects, and so on. The Harappan civilization is not only one of the oldest Bronze Age civilizations, but also one of the most sophisticated. It's generally classified into three groups or general phases. The early Harappan phase, the mature Harappan phase, and the late Harappan phase. The early Harappan phase was the formative period of this civilization, with settlements being marked by their distinct fortifications and new technologies, such as more advanced stoneworking, metallurgy, craft specialization, wheel transport, and relatively expansive trade networks. Though surpassing the size of small towns, the cities of this phase were not as large or populated as those that would come during the mature Harappan phase. It's in that second or mature phase where we start to see the formation and characteristics of a full-fledged urban civilization. Some historians and archeologists refer to this as the golden age of Harappan civilization, a time when Harappan society was at its peak in terms of prosperity. The final or late Harappan phase is defined by the decline of cities and urban life. While the number of settlements may have been greater, they were generally much smaller and more spread out. Harappan cities, especially during the second or mature phase, are most famous for their sophisticated civic planning and organization. Their streets were laid out in a grid system that formed clusters of city blocks that were not too different than those found in many of the modern and well-planned cities of our own day. In some Harappan cities, the width of the main streets could be as wide as 10 meters. Most cities were divided into two main parts basically a high and a low section. The high or citadel part was generally situated in the western section of the city and was where the upper or ruling classes lived. This was also the place where important buildings such as granaries and workshops were located. The lower part of the city was where the common people lived. The word common though doesn't mean that they weren't sophisticated. Families here lived in moderately sized two or more storied houses that had tiled bathrooms and drainage systems. Some houses even had their own wells. 
In terms of food, the diet of most people in Harappan society really depended upon the region that their city was located in. While all of them relied on some form of farming, what was farmed and later consumed varied. For example, Harappan societies in Sindh and Punjab largely consumed wheat and barley while those living in Gujarat were more likely to eat rice or millet. If they lived by a river or the sea, they were likely to consume high amounts of fish. Many of them also hunted local deer and waterfowl. Practically all of them though would have consumed some form of milk or curd, mostly from cattle, but possibly also from buffaloes and goats. Like in Mesopotamia and Egypt, Harappan society was also one of the first to develop their own system of writing. This basically consisted of a pictographic or logosyllabic script, meaning that each symbol stood for a particular word or syllable. Unfortunately, this script has not been deciphered, which is a shame because just think of how much more we'd learn about Harappan society if scholars and linguists could understand it. Speaking of Mesopotamia, another thing that I find fascinating are the extensive trade links that existed between many Harappan cities and those of the ancient Near East. Inventory and trade receipts found in Sumerian cities mention three foreign trading hubs. Dilmun, which included what is today Bahrain and the adjacent Arabian coast, Makan, sometimes pronounced Magan, most of which today is in Oman, and Maluha, which was the Indus River Valley area. Several Harappan seals have been found in cities such as Ur, Nippur, and Lagash, while others from Mesopotamia were found in Mohenjo-Daro. This shows that even back then, parts of the ancient Silk Road network were alive and well. Due to the lack of decipherable writing, or any structures that can be definitively identified as temples, Harappan religion and rituals remain a great mystery. However, scholars on the subject believe that due to the discovery of large baths, ceremonial cleansing must have occurred in preparation for some sort of religious ritual. One of the most interesting objects found at Mohanjo-Daro is an object called the Pashupati seal. It depicts a figure in a yogic posture that has an uncanny resemblance to the Hindu god Shiva. Along with their religion, another great mystery is why or how the Harappan culture and civilization came to an end. This occurred approximately between the years 1900 to 1700 BCE. It's something that has puzzled many scholars, and not surprisingly, there are many theories out there that try to explain it. Historically, the most popular theory has been that it had to do with the arrival onto the subcontinent of a group of Indo-European people known as the Aryans. While some believe that they were hostile to the natives of their new land, others maintain that they simply blended in peacefully with the region's native inhabitants. Both of these theories are challenged by others who, after looking at scientific and geological data, make the compelling argument that natural calamities, such as droughts, earthquakes, and the changing course of the Indus River and its tributaries may have been the cause for their demise. It's even possible that all of these occurred at some level in different areas and at different times. It's hard to conclusively prove any of these theories, let alone the several others that are also out there. What did occur was that the people mentioned earlier, the Aryans, brought a new culture, language, and overall, a different way of life to the Indian subcontinent that in a sense forms the foundation of the Indian society that we know today. This Vedic period is what we'll discuss in the next episode on Indian history. Stay tuned. Once again, thank you so much for joining me. If you learned something, please hit that like button because it helps the channel out a lot and also consider subscribing. Take care and I'll catch you in the next one.